Welcome to the History Hunter. Welcome to our small adventures with the World War II time frame. History Hunter here and my son, Eagle Eyes. Eagle Eyes. We are on the Atlantic Wall and today we're going to share something pretty special with you. We research and we find and share incredible World War II history with all of you. Thank you for being here. Today it is all about a dilemma that Hitler got when he decided that he wanted to build the Atlantic Wall. This is all part of the Atlantic Wall, each and every square centimeter. It's not easy to see that right here, but what was Hitler supposed to do? He had thousands of kilometers of coastline and somehow he needed to protect that. All of us, we know about the huge fortifications on, in Normandy and all of that, but what about the rest of the area? Well, to let you know a little bit more about what the thinking was, let me take you back to the history of the crib and fill you in a little bit. Just going to put you very quickly in the context. By the way, we are in the History Hunter recording room made possible by all your kind support. We restore this room and now it's a recording studio so we can do this in this manner here. Well, let me show you. This is an image of Erwin Rommel inspecting the huge fortifications in the beaches in, in France. And also you can see the thousands of uh, kilometers of barbed wire fencing systems running around the Atlantic Wall. So some of the uh, problems that Hitler had when he created the Atlantic Wall is that you, it's impossible to create huge fortifications along all of this land here. So they used to create fortresses at very special positions with huge guns and all of that. And then they created the smaller Stutzpunkts that we're going to see today, meaning you have to kind of have huge battle stations at lines like that. And then in between, you have to have smaller positions. And that is how they solved it, by littering the coastline with thousands of positions to protect the smaller areas and the fortresses to protect the very important areas. So what you're going to see here today is one of the smaller uh, locations, but we're actually a very, very important place due to what was around there. By the way, these are the World War II shadow boxes that we create for you and we give them to our supporters, we give them to our backers and all of these fun artifacts, we just pass them on to you. So when you see we mentioned Patreon team members, that is one of the perks for that. But now let's go out and uh, see what this place is all about. So on this location, we're going to show you how Hitler kind of planned in these fillings to fill in the space between the big dots. And why is this place here? You're going to see that. It's a very important strategic, uh, strategic important uh, position because of the uh, high vantage point up there. But they also said, okay, we need that, but we also need to protect this place and be able to attack the... Uh, waterline if there would be a invasion from the allies there so this place is all about being ready being aware and be able to trace down and find the enemies coming in ashore and then take them out with a system of weapons that they had up there but first we're going to show you some of the outer perimeter uh installments that is is out here it's, you can't see them now but it, they are here let me show you so here in the forest you might say, hmm, not much to see here. Well, you're wrong, because the first installment which is actually available to see is in that forest, and it's a machine gun nest. Very difficult to spot even today. I'm not gonna bring you down there, but I'm gonna show you the first uh, little feature that you can actually see, and that is right here. So, if you take a look here into the terrain, you can see that suddenly there is something going on here. Why is it stacked up with rocks here? And why is there like a line coming in from here going over there? Well, that's the first defensive measure. That's a little trench to transport the troops back and forth into the mountainside. And it ends in a little tiny special thing further down. So I'm gonna bring you down there. At this location, you're gonna see a huge variation. This is like a field installment. Um, you can see 
there is a trench line running down here. Suddenly, there's some kind of structure built there. An eagle eyes and a friend of mine is down there checking it out. And you can see, why did I need to have a trench here? Well, the important position is behind that mountain. This is to protect themselves towards an attack coming from the rear. So if the Allies manage to go behind this position, come ashore further over there, come behind, they could attack from these fields. But no, the Germans said that's not going to happen because we are going to be ready and wait for the Allies right here. So here you can see my friend and Eagle Eyes is down there and suddenly you get a feeling of, oh, someone did a lot of work here. So there's a machine gun post right there, and the trench leads you further down into the terrain. And when you come down here, you can see that it's actually pretty well built down there. So in here, suddenly you can see that this thing kind of fall down on itself, the roof part. But you can see they built something right here in the end of the trench. And you see the trench comes from there, that's where we started goes in here but what is this thing let's check it out so this thing here is pretty strange but it just shows you the variation variation you can find the massive uh, systems out there with the huge things the Normandy all of that but you could also find what you see here very crude little structure and if I go inside it's just a tiny little shelter and we think it could be a bomb shelter for the crews manning several machine guns here and you can see everywhere there are these these are the actual barbed wire fencing systems and they actually use that to reinforce the roof here you can see that they took what they had these are the piglets are the steel holders for for more of the barbed wire fencing system and it's everywhere so they took what they had to make a little nest right here to be able to take out the enemy coming up this way here come on let's continue this little thing because you're going to see how it ends on the very top of the mountain there's a tunnel system there's a massive bunker underground buried a lot of things here that we're going to share with you here today here you can see the germans really meant business can you see that that's a pole for the barbed wire fencing system and now let me ask you and uh, I'm going to hold the camera very still here and I'm going to ask you, can you see a very special feature up there? Can you see it? No, let me know in the comments if you can see it and point, point it out where you can see it. Because I don't think you can, but uh, I know exactly what we're looking for. But uh, tell me if you can see it from here. So, what are we looking for, Eagle A bunker. But where is it? Probably up there. Let's ask my friend, do you see the bunker? Yeah, it's right about <laughs> there, somewhere. It says it's somewhere say. here. So that is correct. Putting my trained eyes, it's yeah. somewhere yeah. around. Yeah, somewhere here. Yeah, that's correct. But nevertheless, uh, we're going to take you up to a very strange feature here. It's an underground bunker, which we really cannot kind of place into context to know why it's here. But all we know, it's a bunker for six guys. So let's see if we can find that. Every now and then you come across holes like this. Doesn't look like too much, but actually some of them are uh, one, ma one man fighting positions, like foxholes. And there's also a machine gun position here. And I think that that is up there. So let's see if Eagle Eyes can spot that. Yes, Eagle Eyes found it. This is a little fighting position, which my friend will now jump into and kill himself. <laughs> Yes. This is just a tiny little fighting position that could keep off the enemy with a little machine gun, maybe a mortar, and they could protect the whole valley here. It's a very efficient position because you're on higher grounds, and when the enemy would come here, this little fighting position with an MG or something like that, or a mortar or a Panzerfaust, could really take out whoever came here. All right, we are getting close to a feature here, which we really cannot make out. Nevertheless, we're gonna show it to you here. You see here, there's a trench, and that trench kind of leads the soldiers up here, and they have cut down some trees here. And when you can come over here, you can see that this little thing is a hidden gem. It's a bunker going down, into the terrain and you can see this is all you can see you can actually even see it from google earth and this is where the germans decided that 
we need to put a bunker right there and we're going to go in and check it out all right here we are you can see this thing is heavy duty can you see that but just wait to see what's further up here you're going to be amazed to see what the germans did in the in the in the underground on the top there you can see this is where they came down this trench would have been much deeper during those days there's a staircase coming down and as you can see this leads down to this room here and i have to be a bit careful when i'm gonna get down here let me see if we can do this here we are boom so that's a entrance that Eagle Eyes is uh, standing next to and you can see this is the room where this is actually Whoa. oh yeah this is actually registered as a six-man bunker so a six-man crew bunker that is very very strange to see and you can see that place there most likely had the uh, communication and electronics coming in and they would most likely have had a bunker oven right there. And you can see it's very simple, but maybe some of the wooden planks and all of that was original. But I cannot see the bunk hangers. Can you see that, my friend? In the roof, if there was a living quarter, there would be some steel hangers to hang the uh, beds down from. No, so I... Very close to Paris, I think. Yeah, but I think maybe what are these writings there? That writing is quite new. <laughs> no, no. S see through it. No, no. See there. See that when I take the light like that? Can you see the letters? Oh, yeah. There are some letters on the wall there, which is not easy to see, but I have to take the camera away like that. It's definitely. Does it say 1941? One, nine. Can you see that? I think I see 1940. That's 1941. But uh, it's a painting, actually. There's some places there are paintings behind, but that's definitely a 1941 on the wall there. So, pretty cool little thing. And you can see they really made a lot of work to put this here. But then the question is why? Why did I put it here? I don't have a clue. But it's so cool to be able to share that with you now. We're going to go up and going to show you the underground complex, which is further up here. Did you know that you can become a World War II History Hunter team member and the artifacts here could be passed on to you in this manner and fashion here by creating beautiful World War II dioramas and displays? You can be the future keeper of something very, very special by the history and the history hunting that we share together. Check out the link in the video description. You can click that and you can become a patron team member if you want to. Different kind of perks with For Your Eyes Only videos, travel vlogs, restoration projects, all of that good stuff. And if you want to know more, check out the supporter videos in the beginning of each month but now let's continue our little adventure that is a very special detail that is a original german triple piglet uh, barbed wire fence pole and see here the original barbed wire fence is still running here in combination with what is here today that is pretty special so this there were thousands of these millions of these on the atlantic wall and everywhere we go if you take or pay good attention you can actually see them even today all right we have to traverse this little top here first and on the top there the germans had the lookout position they had a little hut and the foundation of that is still there we're not going to go there but on the top there they had a communication pole had a little hut where they could send radio back and forth and there were observation little kind of thing made in rocks and and wood and in that way they could take part in seeing everything that you can see around there you can see it's pretty flat around here then you have this mountain cluster and that's what they needed the high ground all right you guys did you like that? Yeah. So now we're going to go to the little gem in the mountainside and we're going to also show you what is, uh, why the Germans were here. Because they had a defensive and a little weapon system here and I think you're going to enjoy that. But this is, as I said, the Stutzpunkt. This is how they're made, how they're constructed and the infrastructure around the uh, Stutzpunkts are very often to be found out there in the terrain. So you really have to look for them and you, know, you, you have to know what you're looking for. 
and uh, that is basically what we're doing here. So in here, this is where you can really find a massive construction that the Germans installed here. This is where we find out why the Germans were here and how important this place was for them. Because the bigger the installments, the more important the area was. So right in here, where Eagle Eye stays, see that? That is where an underground complex starts. And I'm going to take you through that complex. And then we're going to show and share with you the gun positions or the weapon systems that they had here. Not guns, but weapon systems. And that's just next to us. And we're going to show you that later. But now let's go into this little tunnel system and see what the Germans did there. Whenever you see rock solid mountain like this, hollowed out, you do know that the Germans decided that this is important for us. And this is what you can see you will be met with. Right here is one of the classic shutters. That is where the Germans can take you out if you try to come in this way. You can see there, so ventilation, 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 and ventilation. The more ventilation channels, the more stuff is inside here. So you can see, they could take you out if you try to come in through that entrance here. And then, when you come in here, suddenly, wow, there's a ton of rooms in here. So this first room here is what we call a shutter room, guard room. So if you try to come through here, you can see that there's this kind of little shutter here. Oh, that is completely rusted. That shutter, they could open it, shoot you, shut it. <laughs> you will have a hard time getting through here. So inside here, what is here? There was about 40 guys manning this area. And this is their main headquarter. And you can see there is a ton of features here. Today is just a forgotten graffiti tagged <laughs> position that uh, is nothing, is doing nothing. But during those days, this was a very important place for the Germans. And why? That's because you can see all the things they put up here. So when you come into this room here, you can see this first compartment here, what it was. I think it could have been a munition story for what you're going to see afterwards out here. And then you have this hallway, and it's basically a room with bricks and millions of graffitis. Nevertheless, this tells you that uh, to build all of this had to be some importance of this position. And you can see here, this is the cable trenches, and often where some of the um, water could run out if there were condensation and stuff that would kind of transfer out there into another ditch and then be let out. So this is a substantial little thing they built here. And you can see they actually chiseled out a little pocket there for something. What it is, I haven't got a clue. But it's definitely a square room, entrance area here. And then you have, I'm not sure, could it be that I installed a generator there? I haven't got a clue. Another room coming in here, and you can see it's concrete up on concrete and bricks. And the ice stalactites just tells you that this place is extremely cold. There's like minus eight and nine Celsius today. So it's very, very cold. And you can see here another room. I'm just going to change the camera battery here and I'll get back to you. Oh, I'm actually having problem holding the camera because everything gets so cold. Um, a huge square pocket there. Haven't really got a clue what that is all about. But you can see everything is made in bricks. The roof, the walls, everything is bricked. And down here, you can actually still see some of the cables there. Can you see that? That is the cables, communication cable and uh, telephone lines. And sometimes if you are one of the first guys in here and you lift up one of these, there could actually be pretty much a lot more than just the, um, the cables because the German soldiers also used to store different things that I didn't want the officers to see. Maybe a little bottle of, you know, wine or stronger stuff or a beer bottle. I've read so much about that. So they were here. 
standing guard and uh, sometimes they needed something to heat up with and they could hide it in here so it wouldn't freeze up out there. And there's another kind of square opening here. So this could also have been a mess hall where the crews could have gathered. The food was kind of brought here by trucks and then they could end up spending a meal in here but also they could actually sleep in here. Remember this place would be heated with a very efficient bunker oven from coal or something like that and then this place was pretty nice. Today, well, it doesn't look too nice, but uh, definitely you can see exactly that the Germans meant business here. Another hallway, it leads out here. You can see more of the cable trenches under there. And some of them are untouched. Some of them has been kind of moved around for many, many years. And this is a secondary exit entrance right out there. And this is the first room that we went into. Very special. That is the uh, entrance. And then just next to the entrance here, this is where the Germans tucked away a very, very powerful weapon. See here? Doesn't look like much. But these are munition storage pockets for the weapon that was placed right there. But what was there? Well, the front line, if you could say, the ocean is over there. And to be able to take out vessels, or vehicles, or whatever comes that way be, without being seen, the Germans installed a massive set of mortars here. Vessels or grenade launchers, whatever you like to call them, that used to be right there. So you can see you are tucked in behind the mountain. So on the back, this is where the front line is. On the other side, we're going to see that. And right here is where they said, we'll put our weapon system right here. And that's what they did. So down here, there used to be this huge, you can see here, the pedestal that held it is actually still there. See that thing there? That used to hold this massive uh, uh, mortar and that was placed right there. In that way, they got some coordinates from the viewpoint that we're going to see on the top. The coordinates were sent down here. They had a firing solution. They fired over the hill to the enemy and couldn't be seen and couldn't be hit because it's tucked in behind the mountainside. That is pretty ingenious and that is why there were so many guys here. They had to take care of business by the mortars and have munition inside the mountain there and also have the lookout and a couple of machine guns positioned on the top. There's also another one of these, so let's see if we can find that. Remember the first hill we were on? That's over there. And what is here? Well, another set of trenches. Can you see it? So they made sure that the soldiers can transport themselves quickly up and down the hillside to man the different positions. And this position here leads all the way up to the top. And on the top, that is where they could spot the enemy coming in from the other side of the hill. I'm just going to see if I can first find the second uh, motor position and then we're going to go up to the machine gun uh, tower on the top. Looking for the second position where Wilfred and Karl and Robert, Nubert, whatever these Germans guys were called, they were here. And this is the second um, motor position. Can you see that? From above here, you can actually see down there, that is the attachment point for the motor itself. And this is exactly the second fighting position, which was very important for the Germans. As you're going to see when we come to the top, the spectacular views that are up there. This was very, very strategically smart. They put this motor position right here. And in that way, guess what? The Allies could not touch it. So this Stutzpunkt here could fire hundreds of these huge motor rounds constantly just feeding 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 they maybe had several of the motors when the barrel got hot they just swapped it out changed it with another one and then just kept hammering over to the other side there because that's where they anticipate as i said that the allies would come in so you can see they would come down from here into the position here and they built a little rock wall here the concrete all of this all of this is munition storage for 
the motors and the crews, as I said, would get the coordinates from crew members on the top here. That's going to be a little tiny small bunker that could be a watch bunker or a watchtower and an MG bunker. And there was also a wooden watchtower or hut on the top that communicated with different locations around here. So pretty cool to see that it's still here, even though it's very difficult to find. And if you don't know that it's here, you don't know actually that this was a stretch point on the Atlantic wall. But now we're gonna continue up. We're gonna follow a trench system and we're gonna show you the last feature on the top and show you why the Germans established their stronghold right here. So way all the way on the top here, you can see there is something going on in the terrain. Trench leads up here. See, it comes from lower ground up here and then to this thing here. And here you can see this is a spectacular little lookout position. Can you see it? It's like here, it has three kind of openings like this. And we're gonna go down into this position and see what it's all about. Spectacular views here. But as I said, higher grounds, that was what was important. We came from that hill down the valley into the underground complex, found the first and the second mortar position. And this is where the soldiers will come up. And this area here, see that? Tiny little something, shelter, whatever, with a little concrete roof on top. And you can again see just all kinds of stuff making up the concrete rebars up here. And then that thing there. That is where coordinates could be taken and given, but also by another wooden hut that would be on the top there, which is not there anymore. And this is basically the main strategically uh, placed uh, feature because this, let me show you, I'm gonna go inside it here, doesn't look like much, but when you are inside here, see what you can see? You can see the whole world from up above, can you see that? So from here, the ocean is right there and the area they thought would be attacked is here, but that's been kind of developed during the years, so there's a huge harbor here. But this is what they feared, that the Allies would come in here and this area is further down is a stretch of flatland, almost like a beach, a pebble beach. Not today, but it used to be. And that is what they thought that the Allies could do. They could come in here and try and do that. Maybe that was for munition or communication. There's a little shelf that's been here. I think there was a communication post right here and they stood guard here to be able to find either vessels or whatever coming here, maybe submarines. And immediately when that was spotted, the communication equipment made them able to call down, tell the crews down at the motor positions and the artillery positions, all of that, which is also around here. We're going to show you later because there were five Stutzpunks around here. Five, not just this one, but this one is the one with the best view. And you can see here, basically, if you're up here, you are king. You are able to spot whoever comes this way and you could be ready at any given moment and you can transport your crew, crew members up and down in the trench system safely. They could go into the bunker and in the, in the um, underground world there if there was a um, attack by aircraft and they could be safe in there and they could store the munitions, send the, the radio signals back and forth and in the end they could have control of the terrain and that was mostly what the uh, Stutzpunkt was all about, to be able to early, early warn about huge attacks and then the large fortresses we would be ready. So each and every one of these Stutzpunkts were so, so important for the Germans and their war machine and the Atlantic Wall. Yes, the Atlantic Wall is a pretty exciting place to be. So many features. Uh, we do a lot of research, we travel, we go out there, we do all the hard stuff and you can enjoy and learn from it. And if you enjoy it, well, you can help us out to reach more locations with this little super thanks feature here. That is basically your opportunity to help us out to get some gasoline into the fuel tank, go out and share even more 
exciting history. I'm just preparing some uh, for your eyes only videos for our Patreon team members. And a lot of these will be passed on to our Patreon team members. As you could see in the video, we have this little feature where you can become a Patreon team member. And there are special perks for your eyes only videos, travel vlogs, preparation videos, all of that. All of the research, all of the uh, stuff that we do behind the scenes. We share that with our team members. So you can find a link to become a Patreon team member here where it says more. Just click that and you will find the information also to our PayPal donations. It's there and we also pass on to our PayPal donors artifacts that we find out there on our explorers and journeys. Um, thank you so very much for being here. Thank you for subscribing, commenting, watching. Uh, it is greatly appreciated and it enables us to go out and share even more great history. You know, the YouTube algorithm is not favorable for our kind of material. So if you want to help out, you know, do a donation, um, watch the videos in full, watch more of our videos, put on 10 of them in your lunch break. It will help us out tremendously. I'm just kidding. All right. Thank you so much. Before you know it, we will be back and share more with you. And in the meantime, stay safe, keep smiling. And remember, history is everywhere. Bye-bye.